All right, so uh, go ahead. Um, so this is the sorry. <laughs> go ahead. This is the last uh, last lecture of, of Florence. Oh, yeah. yeah, go ahead. Thank you, Lichuan. Um, all right, so uh, let's continue with this. Now uh, I had time to check uh, on the question that Lichuan raised. Uh, so only one direction is for the non-local case, the easier direction. Strong if rational implies if rational. That's global. However, it's stated only for local case, uh, for local rings, the converse. If rationality uh, implies strongly if rationality. So uh, I, I don't know if any work has been done uh, 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 to answer the, the, your question, Lin Chuan, whether if rationality in general implies strongly if rationality. My guess would be that knowing the fact that the ring is strongly rational locally it doesn't imply that it's strongly rational, rational globally. It's not no, I guess. It's not obvious. So yeah, so uh, that, hopefully that, that clarifies. Um, so again, only in the local case is known as a theorem that every rationality implies strong every rationality. All right, and that's the, the proof that I uh, sketched earlier. All right, so now let's let's move on to to other aspects other uh, that are connected to local cohomology, and uh, we're gonna uh, veer off to a number of results that are due to Kerr's meet that are uh, fundamental for the understanding the the concept of, of rationality. So, for to understand those results, uh, let me um, introduce some more notations. So, it's often useful to to uh, think of the local cohomology as as I mentioned earlier as a direct limit of uh, uh, rings of the form R mod x1 to power t, xd to power d. So if you use that point of view that I used to in just now in lecture two, uh, you can denote the element of the local cohomology in this fashion. Z plus as a coset, Z plus x1 to power d, xd to power t for some t. And if you track down what happens to the Frobenius map on the local cohomology module, basically when you apply it e times, uh, you are raising the element z to power q, where q is p to the e. And uh, now the, the coset is considered in uh, x1 to power qt, xd to power qt. Okay? So now, what does it mean for an element to, to be in the type closure of zero in the highest local cohomology module? If you track down the definition, it means that there exists c in our zero, such that c times a type to power q is zero. For Q large enough. Okay. All right. So um, now I'm slightly pressed for time. So I'm, I, I proved this proposition in the nose, but I'm not going to sketch it here. So uh, how does tight closure of parameter ideals and powers of parameter ideals? Uh, connect to the tight closure of zero. So if you take an element and you present it in the form z uh, divided by x to the power s, then if z is in the tight closure of x1 to the power s, xd to the power s, the eta corresponding to it in the, type, in the, the local cohomology module belongs to the tight closure of zero. And moreover, equality happens if the ring R admits test elements. Okay, so you can go back and forth basically when you have test elements between the tight closure of zero in the highest local cohomology modules, modules and tight closure of parameter uh, uh, parameter ideal and its powers. By its powers, I mean individual powers x1 to power s xd to power s okay all right so let's uh, remember that we have this natural action of f on the highest local cohomology module so that makes this A non commutative, uh, sorry, uh, a module over this non commutative RF or RF, you can think of R to which you adjoin F. Maybe I shouldn't use this diagonal brackets. So you think of F 
Oh, sorry, Florian, there's a comment in the chat of um, asking to yes. see the page for a moment. Yeah. Is that okay? We can move on, Mark. Okay, okay, thank you. Um, the idea is generated by this non commutative relation. Okay, there. Okay, so that's a non commutative ring, and the, the local cohomology module becomes a module over it. And we call a sum module of the local cohomology module if stable if and only if um, f maps it back to itself. On the other hand, this is the same as saying, this is a sum module of the local cohomology as R of F module. Okay, so we're gonna look at stable sum module of the local cohomology. That might appear a little surprising, but uh, the next result will tell you why. So we have the following theorem of Karen Smith. So we take R, a local Neuterian dimension D. Then zero, the tight closure of zero in the highest local cohomology module is F stable is an F-stable sum module. Okay. But more, more importantly, if R is also excellent, normal or you just need excellent and completion a domain but okay let's just say excellent normal then um, this is the unique proper maximal f stable sum module Okay, so this is a remarkable property of the tight closure of zero. Okay, the tight closure of zero, as I showed earlier, governs what happens to the tight closure of the uh, 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 of a full system of parameter ideal and its powers, like x one to power s, x d to power s. So not only it's an f stable sum module, but is the unique proper maximal one. Every sub f stable sum module will be contained in the tight closure of zero. Okay, so that's a remarkable property of local cohomology and was, uh, was proven by uh, Karen Smith. So let, let me sketch a proof on this. Okay, so the, the F-stable property is not difficult. Let's take an element in there. We want that if you apply for Venus to it, you are still in there. Okay. Well, by the definition, we have an element in our knot such that sorry. and then so for each e large enough. Right? But you, you can rewrite this like this. This will happen also for E large enough. So that means that this thing just by the definition 
TV here. Okay. All right. So that wasn't hard. So the, the second part is the hardest part. Let's say we have excellent normal. And um, we, we want to show um, that the type closure of zero is the unique maximal proper F stable sum module of the highest of homology. So for the second part, I forgot to, uh, are we recording? I forgot if we actually. Yeah, the recording's going. Oh, okay, great, thank you. <laughs> I just, I, I did not. Okay, so uh, for the second part, we can reduce to the case where R is complete and domain. Okay. So uh, we can use Matlis duality. Okay. So what, how do we do this? So we're gonna assume that um, there is an F stable sum module Not in here, okay? So that means that there exists eta such that the span of its Frobenius images is not contained in the type of Okay? So we're gonna uh, derive a contradiction from here. Okay, so we have this, let's call this span N, okay? N is a sum module of the local cohomology. So we can put it in a short exact sequence like this. And then we can apply the matrix duality, which is, homing into E, where E is the injective half. So when you do that, you preserve short exact sequences. And you get something like this. And this is uh, the canonical mode. All right, so this is um, torsion-free module of rung one. Okay, so this is gonna be a torsion-free module. And because we have rank one, we have only two properties. Either the fraction field tensor with the dual of C zero, or the other one is. Okay. Because the, 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 uh, the dual of C is torsion free, this is not possible. So we get this to be zero, okay? But that means that there exists C, such that C um, times N is zero, okay? But when you apply duality, so if something kills an element, it kills the dual, okay? So that means that I'm sorry, you need C such that this happens, implies C the dual is this, that it kills the dual of the dual, which means that C kills N, okay? Which means that C kills this for all E, okay? And then from here, we get that N is in the type of short zero. 
Okay. So this is a very neat argument based on the fact that um, the canonical module is torsion free of rank one. So we have a short exact sequence like that uh, uh, implies that either the, the, the when you test through the total ring of fractions, either uh, the matrix dual of C is zero or the matrix dual of N is zero. We get that the matrix dual of N is zero after tensoring with the total fraction, uh, the, uh, the, the uh, total ring of fractions of R, and we get an element in the annihilator of N dual, which propagates to the uh, to kill a, uh, the dual of the dual of N, but that's N by matrix duality. So therefore C kills all the iterations under Frobenius of eta. Therefore eta itself is in the tight closure of zero. Okay. So that's, that's a sketch of the proof of the fact that uh, in an excellent normal ring, the tight closure of zero is the unique maximal proper F-stable submodule. Okay. So now with this in mind, we obtain a very nice characterization of uh, F-rational rings. It's a corollary to the previous theorem, but I'm gonna state it as a theorem because it's very important. Um, let's say you have a local excellent coin ring of dimension D. R is a rational if and only if there exists no non-zero F-stable proper some modules in the highest local cohomology of R. Okay. Um, So this characterization made the transition. So no, nowadays is sort of uh, entire literature uh, on results that, or studies of um, F-stable sum modules of the highest of homologies. So this, this type of, re this result of Kerr Smith uh, open up an entire area of research that looks at what happens to the action of Robinus on the local homology modules. And I just, because of lack of time, I don't, I can't really mention almost anything about this, but there is the entire literature on the various classes of rings and what can happen, okay? All right, so uh, I think we can move now to a different aspect of um, the, the theory, which will make the transition towards uh, connections to rational singularities, which is uh, one of the things that I wanted to, to be able to cover. And, um, the first, the, the thing to keep in mind would be to understand sort of the, uh, this subject, you need to think about where tight closure comes when you have a parameter idea, okay? So there are a few um, obvious places. And I like to talk a little bit about the results of this type. Um, so I'm gonna have two type of uh, rings in this, um, uh, section, either local rings or N-graded rings, where the zeroed piece is a field of characteristic P, okay? And when I'm gonna look at parameters, I mean uh, either parameters in the local case or homogeneous parameters in the um, graded case. So there are three uh, parts of the tight closure that appear naturally. So I'm gonna denote but by I lean this union of all these columns, uh, the union is over S greater or equal than one, x1 to power s, x n to power s, colon with the product, x to power s minus one. So okay. So basically this kind of quantifies the failure of x of being a regular sequence in a, in a way. So that's why, uh, and it quantifies it for all s. So uh, this is the definition of lean closure. There is this definition of I germ, which I read from here, okay, which is basically uh, the sum of the tight closure of uh, I ideas where you remove one of the parameters. Okay, so naturally that belongs to uh, the tight closure of the original uh, ideal. And you also have the Frobenius 
exposure of I, which we know, you know, um, it's it's part of I star. So the Frobenius closure would be X in R such that there is a power Q, so, such that X to power Q is in I power bracket Q. Okay, so we have a, a, a result that tells you um, how do these pieces contribute. So the in the local case, if you have an equidimensional homomorphic image of Koyama coloring and a system of parameters, then the integral closure of I to power D plus the I germ closure plus the limb closure plus the Frobenius closure is part of the type closure. Okay. So this far, first part is the integral closure of I to power D comes from the Brianson Skoda theorem. And uh, Ian Aberbach is going to talk about that. So I'm not going to uh, uh, mention too much about this. Uh, in, the, in the graded case, you have a version uh, similar. The only difference is that if you have a homogeneous system of parameters, and if you look at their degrees, and you take D to be the sum of their these degrees, then the part coming from the Brianson Skoda theorem is the elements of non negative degree plus I germ plus I lim plus I f is instead. Okay. So you can look at this theorem and, and see, okay, so tie closure, the, the, some natural parts that belong to tie closure would be the stuff that comes from the brilliance of Skoda. The germ closure, which comes from smaller ideals, basically ideals obtained by uh, removing one of the parameters. The lean closure, which comes from the colon capturing, and the Frobenius closure, which is naturally in the tie closure. Okay. Uh, in fact, one can do a short argument. I don't have time to prove it. It's in the it's in the notes. Uh, when you know that the, the, the homogeneous uh, system of parameters are actually also test elements, which uh, happens often enough in, in examples, and the ring is coin Macaulay to begin with, a short knit argument based on degrees um, can show that, in fact, the tight closure of x1 to xd is just the sum between the Frobenius closure and the part coming from the Brianson Skoda theorem, the, the, the non negative degree part. Okay, but I'm gonna I'm gonna skip the proof of this result because of uh, I'm running short on time. Okay, all right. So, so what other, uh, what else can be in the tight closure of a, of an ideal generated by a system of parameters? And this is, comes to an um, important result uh, due to Karen Smith, which connects uh, tight closure of an ideal generated by a system of parameters to the notion of plus closure, okay? So let me remind you what that is. Let's assume that we have a domain and Q of R is the fraction field of R. And I'm gonna take R plus to be the integral closure of R in the algebraic closure of QR, okay? So this is gonna be a non Neutrian ring in general. And there is a big theorem about this that says that uh, if you have a local excellent uh, ring of characteristic P, R plus is B coin Macaulay. So this is a resulting characteristic P. There was, it's an old result, but important. Okay, so uh, Karen Smith showed that in fact, uh, the, 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 this B coin Macaulay algebra can be used to characterize the tight closure of parameters in, um, in general, in an excellent domain. So the, the result is as follows. You take R to be local excellent domain and take I to be a parameter. Okay. Then 
the statement is that I star is obtained from going to, I, to R plus and contracting back to R. And this thing here is, I'm sorry, this thing here is called plus closure. Okay. Oh, I guess it doesn't show on the screen. I'm sorry. I plus is called plus closure. So what's plus closure? You take I, you expand it to R plus, you go to a non Euclidean ring and you contract back to R, okay? So basically it, there are elements that are in the expansion of I to a module finite extension and contract it to R, but you don't fix the module finite extension. You can take as big as you want. So that's what I pl uh, plus closure is. And uh, this fundamental result shows that I star equals uh, this type of closure, okay? The proof is sketched in my notes. It's actually uh, pretty difficult. It's, uh, it's uh, based on a uh, creative, so to speak, uh, induction argument and um, Matlin's duality and a few other things that um, uh, you, you can see in the notes. Now, one thing that, uh, it does, and I've, I presented this in the lecture notes, is the following, you can re reinterpret this result in the following way. You can uh, use it to show that if you take R plus, which we, we know it's a big Hoya Macaulay algebra in characteristic P, then if you take an ideal I generated by a system of parameters in R, and if you look at what it would mean for, basically you try to compute its tight closure in R plus, then you can prove using this result that you get I. So in some, you know, uh, vague way, if you want, this result can be rephrased as saying that uh, R plus is not only B coin Macaulay, but it's also F rational in some way, okay? So that's, uh, that's one way of thinking of this, okay? All right, so I'd like to, uh, move on now and uh, try to see a few things about rational singularities. All right, so, and the connection to F rational rings. So let's, let's move now to characteristic zero. So let's take a local normal ring that is essential of finite type over a field K of characteristic zero. And uh, let's take the uh, resolution of singularities of X. All right, so we say that um, R or X has rational singularities if the du direct image of F lower star, the derived functor RJ F lower star of OZ is zero for J greater than zero, okay? And now, um, We say that R has rational singularities in general if the localization has rational singularities at every prime. Okay. Uh, sorry, Lauren, you wrote X equals spec X. Do you mean X equals spec R? I'm sorry. Uh, in the, the in yes. middle of the thank you, that thank you. X equals spec R, yeah. Yes. So the um, derived functor Rj is described in harsh terms. So unfortunately, some of this setup for the rational singularities uh, uses quite a bit of machinery from algebraic geometry that they don't have the uh, possibility to uh, review. Um, it's in harsh form for, for the most, I, all of it is actually in harsh form. And um, what I'll try to do, I'll try to sort of unravel some of these results to make them more concrete in terms of um, uh, what it means concretely when we have examples. Okay, so that's the definition. Um, a few things to, to, to mention here. Um, for example, if this definition is independent of the, the choice of resolution of singularities Z, if uh, R 
is an isolated singularity, then RJF lower star of OZ is the same as the local cohomology. So that indicates sort of the connection between a rational rings and rational symmetries. We go through through this local cohomology point of view for all J between one and dimension minus two and um, Another observation would be that the structure sheaf is this, the cohomology of the structure sheaf. All right, so another thing that is known in the literature is a, a rational singularity is quite a norm. Okay. All right, so how does one check that you have a rational singularity uh, fast? Okay, so. I like to mention that it's a result by Flannery and Watanabe that is useful. Um, so that result uses this concept of A invariant. So let me describe what an invariant is. So we're talking now about N graded rings with M homogeneous maximal ideal over a field uh, K, it's a finite degenerate K algebra where K is the zero degree P so far, okay? When you have a graded, a grading, I'm sorry, on R, uh, this grading is propagates naturally to uh, a grading on the highest local cohomology. Okay, so the highest the the, the highest local cohomology module is uh, graded as well. Okay, is in fact z graded. The a invariant would be the maximum integer n such that. Uh, the degree n piece of the local cohomology module is non-zero, okay? And, all right, so is the highest integer n such that the uh, local cohomology module in degree n is non-zero, okay? You should remember here that this definition makes sense because the ring, uh, sorry, the local cohomology module is Artemia, okay? All right. So the following result by Flynn and Watanabe uh, provides a very convenient way of checking that you have a rational singularity. So let's say you have this uh, uh, setup where you have an n-graded ring. Uh, the zero piece is a field K of characteristic zero. It's a finitely genetic K algebra. M is the homogeneous maximal ideal. Then R has a rational singularity if and only if. The ring has to be core Coimacolian normal. Two, you need to have a rational singularity at all p, different than m. And three, the a invariant has to be less than zero. Okay. All right. So the first property usually is checked easily. So you not easily, but you must be able to show this if you hope to show that you have a rational singularity. The second part, the, you know, it can be challenging. So most often this, this result is very easy to apply when you have an isolated singularity and you can check that your ring has an isolated singularity uh, by using the Jacobian criteria of regularity, which is a somewhat standard uh, chapter in cumulative algebra. So if you're lucky enough and that applies and you have an isolated singularity, then it all remains to check that the A invariant is less than zero. And um, how does one do that? Well, luckily for complete intersections, the A invariant can be computed easily. Um, so let's say we have, I'm gonna say how that goes. Let's say we have a ring like this, where each FI are homogeneous of degree di and they form a regular sequence. Regular sequence on R. Then the A invariant 
is the sum of the degrees of fi minus the sum of the degrees of xi. Okay, so it's a simple computation if you have essentially a complete intersection. And this is not uh, R, this is K, okay? This is R, okay? So let's take a look at the example that I had earlier. Okay. In the example that I took earlier, how do you make this homogeneous? So this is a, what we call a quasi-homogeneous hypersurface because we can uh, give uh, uh, degrees to the variables x, y, z to make it homogeneous. So for example, if you take the degree of x to be 15, the degree of y to be 10, and the degree of z to be six, okay? Then f would have degree 30, right? X squared plus Y squared plus Z fifth suddenly is homogeneous of degree 30. So the A invariant in this situation would be what is 30 because it's only one equation that we're, ah, I can't, I'm, I just realized that uh, somehow the bottom of my uh, slide doesn't actually. It's definitely showing up for me. I can see right Oh, it does, right. it doesn't show up on my computer. Oh, I see, maybe I don't have full screen. Uh, yeah, anyways, so yeah, but it's, it's confusing for me. So thank you though. <laughs> um, so it'd be the degree of F is 30 minus the sum of the degrees, right? Which is 15 plus 10 plus six. So it's 30 minus 31. So we get negative one, okay? So the invariant is negative for this. You can check it's an isolated singularity using the Jacobian criteria regularity. You have only one equation, so it's fairly easy to check this. And it's called Macaulay because it's the polynomial ring divided, uh, modeled out by a non-zero divisor, okay? And normality can also be checked. So, um, so this beautiful result of Schleiden and Watanabe shows you, for example, that uh, in characteristic zero, this ring is a rational singular, okay? So, Um, yeah, so I um, like to state the counterpart of this result in characteristic P. So we are going towards uh, some results that will show that there is a strong connection between F rational rings and rational singularities. Okay, and uh, the, res the following result of Huxley and Hunecke suggests that uh, the, 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 this connection. So they basically they have a result in characteristic P that is the counterpart of the Flannery and Watanabe result. Uh, and it's very useful in practice to check every rationality. So I would like to, to state it. So uh, as before, assume that you have an n gradient ring. Now assume that the ring is called Macaulay to begin with. Finitely generated K algebra R0 is K as before. And we have an extra assumption, which is, uh, uh, you know, non-trivial, but we could use perhaps Jacobian uh, uh, elements to, to satisfy it. So assume it's, homogeneous max ideal M has the property that every power is a test element. So I'm, I know uh, every, sorry, I wanna say that Every element element in here has a power. That is a test element. Okay, so you have this condition. So with results from uh, the theory of uh, test elements, this is often satisfied. Okay, so the following are equivalent. One, all ideals generated by homogeneous is system parameters are tightly closed. Two, 
When you localize the homogeneous maximal ideal, you get an F rational. Three, the A invariant is less than zero and there exists I homogeneous system of parameters generated by system of parameters that is for being closed. And then four, R is a version. Okay. So I would, uh, part three is the part that I want to emphasize. So basically under nice conditions regarding test elements, you can check that a coir macaulay and graded ring is irrational simply by being able to compute the invariant and being able to show that there is a homogeneous system of parameters that is forbidden as closed. Okay, so this is the, the new layer here in characteristic P that it says that you, it's about the invariant and it's about forbidden closure of a system of parameters. Luckily, the part about Frobenius closure can be checked using Feathers criteria, oftentimes. Uh, okay, so uh, they the talks about um, the rings being F pure. So I don't have time to, to dwell more on that, but I just want to say that that part oftentimes can be can be uh, checked as well uh, with simple computations. Okay, so this is a very strong result, and this is the counterpart in characteristic P of the Flinner and what another result, all right? So let's see, okay. Um, so what's the connection between uh, F rational rings and rational singularities? So the first uh, observation that we need to make is we define rational singularities in characteristic zero, okay? So we need the definition A definition characteristic P. The reason we need this is because we don't know yet that um, there exists resolution of singularities in characteristic P, right? So we need to, to uh, get around that, okay? Luckily, Libman and Tessier uh, provided a characterization. in arbitrary characteristic. Of rational singularities. Okay. And those singularities are called pseudo rational. Okay. And they overlap with rational singularities in characteristic zero. So specifically, what is that? What does it mean uh, for a singularity to be pseudo rational? It means that um, for any desingularization or resolution of singularities, from Z to the spec of R with Z normal and denoted the closed fiber E, the pre-image of uh, the maximal ID in the spec of R. The canonical map for any desingularization, the canonical map into HD with supported E of O of Z is injective. Okay. So this characterization exists in characteristic zero of rational singularities. And this part here is by Liban and Tessier, the definition of pseudo rational. So this is what is taken as the definition of pseudo rational. It, it recovers uh, rational singularities in characteristic zero. Okay. So it boils down to the injectivity of a map between uh, local cohomologies, all right? A canonical map between local cohomologies. So um, 
Kara's meat used this characterization to prove the following, that if you have a local ring that is excellent of characteristic P, then RF rational implies R pseudo rational. Okay. So how did how was she able to do this? So if you look at here the, this characterization, pseudo rationality it can be interpreted in the injectivity of a map between local cohomology uh, uh, modules, basically. So what happens is if you want to show that this map is injective, you will remember that if rationality was characterized as uh, the fact that the local cohomology doesn't have any F stable sub modules um, that are proper. And you prove that the kernel of this map is such a sub module. So it automatically must be zero. So that's in a, in a short the essence of her argument. Okay. So you look at the kernel of this map and you show it's F stable. So then for F rational rings, uh, her original result about uh, uh, the highest local cohomology forces this to be zero. So you get injectivity for free. So it's a beautiful connection between that perspective of local cohomology and pseudo rational uh, rings. Okay. So, sorry. Okay. What happens in characteristic zero? Okay. So this is in characteristic P. All right. So, in short, in characteristic zeros, um, I'm, I'm basically out of time. So, I'm just going to write the two results and stop here. Uh, somebody, I, in fact, asked in the previous lectures um, how you go about in study type closure in characteristic zero. Okay, so the, the, the last part of my lecture notes mentions a bit uh, how you go from characteristic P to characteristic zero. So, using these ideas, you can talk about rings of F rational type over a field of characteristic zero. Okay, and there is a descent to characteristic P that I sketch in my lecture notes. So when we talk about a rational type, roughly speaking, we say that when you go modulo P in a convenient way, for most P, you have a rational ring. So let's say, you know, you can imagine that I give you the equation X squared plus Y cubed plus Z fifth. Okay, so that's in characteristic zero. You can take that equation and regard it in characteristic in over, over the integers, and then you go can go modulo P, so a rational type would mean that the, the given equation is a rational for most P, okay? Of course, the descent to characteristic P from characteristic zero can be a bit more involved and it, it is more involved, but I, I'm sketching it in the, in the notes. So when I talk about a rational type, I mean by descent to characteristic P for most P, I have a rational rings. So using that uh, point of view, it's a simple reduction to show uh, that uh, the result of, of Smith shows the following, that if you have um, a scheme of finite type over K of characteristic zero, over a field of characteristic zero, then X is of every rational type implies that X has rational singularities. All right, so F rational type. So essentially, if you have F rational for most P when you descend to characteristic P, then you have rational singularity. So that's one, uh, that's uh, the, the result that uh, was proven by Ken Smith. And shortly after, Hara was able to use work of and ideas of Delaney Lizzie. Vanishing theorems, a vanishing theorem of Akizuki, Kodaira Nakano, plus some pioneering point of view of Feder and Watanabe um, to show that if you have 
if R is a finitely generated K algebra over a field K of characteristic zero, if the spec of R has rational singularities, then R itself is of rational type. Of all right. So in the so we can think of rational singularities as being the same of as rings of re, f rational type because of results by Smith and uh, and Hart. Okay. All right. So I think I'm I'm already four minutes over. So I'm I'm, I'm going to stop here. Okay, thank you, Corin, Florin, for the nice talk. And are there any questions? So are there any questions from the chat? Um, yeah, I don't, I don't think. I, I, don't, I don't see it. Okay. So if no questions, let's thank uh, Florian again for the nice lecture. Thank you. Thank you. And I'll see you guys on Monday uh, when I'm going to introduce uh, Professor Trivedi. Okay. We're going to be a tutoring session with Kyle. And then uh, the second part of the day on Monday would be uh, new lectures from Professor Trivedi.